Hey, good morning to you. It is 10 a.m. here Central Time or 10.06, giving you an update on WWL Plus and all of our other apps and services you can watch us on. Uh, letting you know, Tropical Storm Helene has been formed and been designated in the Northwest Caribbean. You can see there spinning just to the west of the Grand Cayman Islands, about a 100 a mile, 80 miles away from Cozumel, Mexico and moving northwest at 12 miles per hour. So the storm has sped up slightly and it is still moving northwest. Now, while it is moving northwest, we still expect this storm to turn to the north and eventually a slight northeast turn as it moves towards Florida by Thursday. So we have not seen any big changes in the forecast other than we now have a named storm. Let me walk you through the latest track here of what we're tracking with Tropical Storm Helene. Uh, it's going to be moving northwest for the remainder of today. Let's put this in motion for you. You can see they're approaching Cancun and Cosmel by tonight and early Wednesday. This is when we expect the storm to continue to grow stronger and could approach hurricane strength right near Cancun by early Wednesday morning. If you have trip plan to Cancun or maybe you're watching us down here in Mexico right now. The worst will be later tonight into early Wednesday morning, likely as a strong tropical storm or a weak category one hurricane. This is when the storm begins to turn. Here we are by Wednesday afternoon, the storm growing in intensity and continuing to grow stronger as we head into Thursday morning. By Thursday morning, we do expect tropical storm conditions to be impacting the Florida coast, especially the west side of Florida, the peninsula there, and that's as the storm grows stronger. Here we are by Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday afternoon at about 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The core of the hurricane will likely be west of Tampa, but Tampa will be on the east side getting active weather and strong winds and surge. The storm continues to strengthen and notice intensifying to a major hurricane with landfall still expected Thursday evening in the Florida Big Bend. That's going to be somewhere between Panama City and likely Cedar Key there. So that's the Big Bend pushing it inland and speeding the storm up. The storm will likely continue to move inland rapidly, speeding up, and that means these tropical storm force winds and even hurricane force winds will penetrate far inland, even into parts of southern Georgia, could see some significant winds here. And then notice a tropical storm up around Atlanta by Friday morning into Friday afternoon, the worst moving through Georgia, and then it quickly gets on out and it's dissipating by the time we get into the weekend. So overall, there have not been any significant changes here, except for we now have tropical storm Helene. The storm is still forecasted to make landfall in the Big Bend of Florida by Thursday evening as a major storm. Category three at least, but those in those areas should be preparing for a category four storm. We always say prepare for that category higher. So if you're watching us in southeast Louisiana or south Mississippi or Alabama, and you're still feeling a little bit nervous about this storm and hoping it makes this turn, this is why we're confident that it will make the turn. Now today and tonight, it's going to be moving northwest. It is going to look like it's coming right at southeast Louisiana. But as we get into the early morning hours, let's say let's fast forward to 5 a.m. tomorrow. I want you to notice I'm going to reverse and put it back in motion. The ridge over the Gulf, you can see it disappears. So what's happening here is the ridge is weakening considerably because that trough, that low pressure you see there sitting over uh, Arkansas, North Mississippi, North Louisiana, that's moving in and weakening that ridge. That's what's going to allow this storm to begin to turn. So you can see as the ridge, ridge weakens, the storm begins to lift north and even parts of it lifting northeast as we get into Thursday. And then there you have it making landfall. Now the storm as it approaches that trough will begin to speed up. So it's almost going to slingshot it into Florida, the Big Bend area, and then it will wrap around that center of circulation of that upper level low. We call this interestingly enough the Fujiwara effect. And what's happening there is you've just got two low pressures and they're dancing around each other. They will eventually consolidate into one and well, Helene will dissipate and get it absorbed into the big upper level low. So that's why the storm is expected to turn. Our confidence hasn't changed on this thing turning. It will turn through the early morning hours on Wednesday. So by tomorrow morning at about this time, it should have more, more northerly movement to it and in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Our tropical models, they're showing the similar same outlook here. Tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening, Notice it's in the Gulf and it's made that northerly turn. It's likely strengthening quickly at this time as it builds that inner core. And then you can see their models are really locked in on the Big Bend area of Florida. Maybe the worst of it passing between Tallahassee and Gainesville, somewhere in there. And that's where you could have not only the highest winds, but the highest storm surge and the heaviest of the rainfall. I do want to show you one of our high resolution models and I'm 
typically don't show high resolution models like this unless there's multiple models showing a similar outcome. And this one is reasonable. And I wouldn't show you if I didn't think it was going to be a possibility here. So here we go. This is tomorrow morning at about 11 o'clock. So about this time tomorrow, you could see that the storm is right near Cancun and Cozumel, likely as a strong tropical storm, maybe a weak category one hurricane. This is when it's likely going to really start to develop that core. And the more core that a hurricane has, if it's in the right conditions, it can rapidly intensify. And we think that's what this could do as we go into Wednesday night and early Thursday. You can see this model shows by the morning hours on Thursday that we're starting to see that little eye pop out. And as we go forward in time here, as we go into Thursday afternoon, that center and this hurricane really becomes strong, powerful, and it continues to stay powerful up until landfall. Models showing that this could be a well developed major hurricane. Category three, category four here moving into the Big Bend and then quickly moving inland. Now, impacts in southeast Louisiana, we're not expecting anything major from this. I do think the winds will get a bit gusty here on Thursday. You could see there the brighter colors in the Gulf Thursday morning into Thursday afternoon. Some of these winds will gust 30, 40 miles an hour out in the Gulf waters, but inland 20 to 30 miles an hour. So nothing significant. If you do have any loose or lightweight objects, maybe you put up Halloween decorations. It may not be a good, it may be a good idea to rather support secure those or bring them in at least on Thursday and then the winds will begin to die down as we head into your your Friday here. Now storm surge for Florida. Let's talk a little bit specifically about Florida impacts. The storm surge is going to be rather significant in the Big Bend area in that area where water gets funneled in. There is the potential for up to 15 feet of storm surge areas like Cedar Key anywhere in this curve the surge is going to be likely significant. Now, the further you get down towards Tampa, we're thinking five to eight feet of storm surge seems like a good bet. That's fairly significant. And then down towards Fort Myers, more like two to four, three to five feet of storm surge. So you're going to see surge up and down the west coast of Florida because the wind field of this thing is going to be rather large. The wind field is likely going to stretch out hundreds of miles from the center. And uh, I could show you just how big the wind field is expected to be as the storm grows in intensity and size. I want you to see right now this tropical storm force winds you can see there in yellow. Fast forward it in motion into tomorrow morning. You could see just how big that tropical storm force wind field grows. And then as we get into Wednesday night, tropical storm force winds are already approaching the Florida coastline there towards Fort Myers and Tampa. So conditions will go downhill for those areas by Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. I'll zoom out here and then you can see as we put it in motion, tropical storm force winds almost for the entire peninsula of Florida throughout Thursday afternoon. The core of the worst winds with the current track stay east, excuse me, west of Tampa. Certainly something we're going to have to watch to make sure it doesn't try to get too close to Tampa. And then there's the core of the winds moving inland over parts of Tampa. As we go into Thursday night and then quickly racing up through Georgia into the early hour morning or early morning hours on Friday. So that is the latest thinking. No big changes. We now have tropical storm Helene here expected to make landfall in the Big Bend of Florida Thursday evening as at least a category three. Some models say a category four or maybe even stronger. Of course, we always say plan for a category higher. If you have travel plans to Florida on Thursday, not a good idea. If you're going to South Florida, Worst should be gone by Thursday night. Friday's looking good across South Florida, but of course in the panhandle of Florida up towards Gainesville, Tallahassee. While the worst may be gone by Friday morning, there may be some significant lingering impacts with power outages and trees down. And then those strong winds are going to be moving up into Georgia. Now for our Saints game going up in um, Atlanta on Sunday, this will be long gone by then. So we don't expect any impacts in Atlanta on Sunday from this. It will be lifted to the north and have dissipated by that point. But that is the latest as of the 10 a.m. advisory here in the central time zone. This is the 11 a.m. advisory for the eastern time zone. If you are looking for the next track update, that will be at 4 o'clock central time this afternoon. The next intermediate advisory will come in around 1 o'clock. They'll update the intensity, but you won't have a track update until later on this afternoon. But I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone. Thank you for joining me right here on WWL Plus.